These are revolutionary times. These are radical times. And that's what, that's what Josiah is saying. We have to become a radical people. We have to become a revolutionary people for God. This is why we were born. And you know what, Eric, one, one last thing is that when people look at, when you look at a movie, what's the most exciting part of a movie? The last 15 minutes. So listen, praise God, we're in the last 15 minutes. These are the exciting times. And this could be the greatest time for those who will rise. It says, the eyes of the Lord are searching the earth, looking for the one. You be that one. I mean, everybody listen, you be that one, God will lift you up. In the book, you yeah. reveal uh, some discoveries about the coming yeah. of yeah. this plague. Yeah. And by the way, what, what plague? COVID was basically like a three-day flu for most people. It, it's just one of the most confused, wicked things that have ever happened in this country. We don't have time to get into it, but what do you touch on in the book yeah. concerning what God revealed yeah, to you about it, yeah, the coming except, of COVID? Yeah, 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 there's a lot of stuff surrounding it, yet... Yet, here's the thing, there, there is a thing that, you know, Jeremiah, when he's speaking to, when he's looking over the Valley of Hinnom, where the, where the nation had offered up its children, uh, he says, basically, you know, you cannot, you do this, and what you did to the children, it's going to come back to you in one form or another. One of the forms, he says, one of the forms that's actually in, in Jeremiah is, it's, it talks about a dever gadol, which means a, a literally a, a disease, a pandemic, something, you know, that way. Now, not getting into all things surrounding it. However, there was nevertheless a disease that came upon and a lockdown and all things that, for whatever reason, changed our life. Now, the thing is, the interesting thing, here's the thing. When you look at, I talked about the Jubilee, when you look at when did America start killing its children on demand? It wasn't 73, it was 70. That's when abortion on demand began in America. It began, and New York was crucial in that. And the thing is, that if you take, if you go to the 50th year, it takes you to 20, what, what year? 2020. 2020, this, we, we have this shaking of America. Yeah. I mean, no matter how, what we think about it, it was a shaking of America. Yeah. It comes in that year. Now, the thing is, the exact date when abortion on demand began, made its entrance in America, was actually in New York when it, it appeared in the legislature as the bill that was going to really begin it all. It was January 20th. 20, 1970. Hold on a go second. We're, we're going to go to a break. January okay. 20th, 1970. We also know Roe v. Wade was January 20th, a couple years later. We'll be right back. 22. Folks, we're talking to Jonathan Kahn. The new book is the Josiah Manifesto. We'll be right back. Hey there, folks. If you enjoy this video and want to see more interviews like this one, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Please just hit the subscribe button below. Click the notification bell so you don't miss new content every single week. 90% of you who watch are not subscribed, and you could be in the first 100,000 subscribers to my channel. I would love that. Please subscribe. God bless you. You're talking about uh, dates. So you just said yes. abortion on demand was introduced in New York legislature January 20th, yes. 1970. Yes. 50 years later is... January 20th, 2020. So go ahead. Yes. Anything happened on that day? That is the day. On that day is the identification of patient zero. That is the official day that COVID, official day, enters America, 50 years to the exact date. Okay. Now, here's another thing, Eric. Remember when everything closed down? Of course, remember, in Ma it was in March. Everything shuts down. Trump gets on the on the on the on the airwaves, says we are being we are quarantined. That was the day of the quarantine, day of the lockdowns, all that. Um, it was the day of the stock market crash. They call it the media called it the day that changed everything. Now the thing is, so that's when everything stopped. Our lives were disrupted gigantically. Well, that was March 11th. That's the that's what they they identified March 11th, uh, 2020. Go back 50 years. Anything happened on March 11th, 1970? March 11th, 1970 is the exact day that abortion on demand began in America. We began killing our babies. Let me, let me give another one. When, when this all came, you know, what was key in abortion coming to America was New York. New York, more than any other place, coming to the continent, uh, New York actually became the, the abortion capital of America to this day. And it actually spread through New York. Well, the thing was, so when, when, this, when COVID came, where did it focus when it came? It came, it focused on New York. In fact, one out of every two cases was in New York for that time. And the thing is that it, it reached its peak with, with New York, uh, April 11th, it was a milestone because there were more cases in New York than there were in any other nation. I mean, that, that, so, and that was April 11th. Go back 50 years, anything happened, April 11th, 1970, that was the date that New York, 
legalized abortion. 50 years to the exact date again. Let me let me throw in. I'm going to throw in two things, you know, and this is actually going to lead to Trump in, in a moment. But but two things. One is that when you look at the, the where abortion came in to America, there were two gates to the continent. One, as I said, was New York. The other was Washington State. 1970. That was the other gateway. Well, when 50 years later, where does this that where did what about COVID? Where does it come? In? Well, when they did genetic studies on the virus, they found out there were two markers. The majority of all cases came from the gate of New York, where we began killing our children, and the other gate was Washington State. That was the exact same ones. And now, now I'll put one last thing in here. And this is I'm going right now just by the CDC, whether we whatever we think of it or not. But CDC, when they identified, and also other studies, the excess death rate over those. Well, let me before I say that, how many babies were killed in those first three years? from 1970 to Roe versus Wade, that, that three-year window. 1.3 million is what, they, is, what, is what the CDC has. When you go 50 years later, and regardless of what, what, they, what has come out, is the excess death, however, whatever we view how it caused, caused by lockdowns, caused, the excess death is 1.3 million, the exact same number as the children. I mean, folks, you can't make it up. You can't make it up. Uh, and this is, this is astonishing. Now, you know, uh, now's not the time for me to get into it, but just to say what caused a lot of those COVID deaths. They were in many cases, in most cases, preventable. Uh, we know that people were prevented from ta- taking ivermectin. There's all kinds of wickedness, just as there was wickedness uh, in the taking of the lives of the unborn. So we're going to put that to the side. But, yeah. Jonathan, the fact that you ferret out this information um, for me, the big takeaway is to say God is in control. God yes. is a God of history, uh, and he gives yes. us these things to encourage us that yes. he, he really is there. Uh, and so keep going with this. What you yeah. said, eventually yeah. it leads to, uh, to Trump. Trump or whatever. I, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. One of the things I, I spoke with you, I think it might, uh, it might have been the first time we spoke together on the air. But one of the things in the past, one of the books is called The Paradigm, and that, and that is there are biblical templates. God gives templates, and he can, and it's not, and I'm not ever saying that the Bible is for, is predicting or prophesying specific things here. What I am saying is that God is the God of everything, and God make God weaves everything together and makes paradigms or make he gives templates in the Bible. Now the amazing thing is that, and we can actually get things from it. The leaders of our day, and the paradigm showing that the leaders of our day are actually following these templates from the Bible. Donald Trump to America in, in this is, is that there's a template of a man called Jehu. Jehu was wild. You know, he was unpredictable. No, you, we didn't even know where he was at with the Lord, but he was used by God. And he was used by God when the nation was falling away from God. He was used like a, a trump card, basically. And he just kind of disrupted where it was going. And he actually went against Baal worship. And the thing is, and he, and he went against the house of Ahab. Now, now he starts this, this race to the throne on this chariot. It's, the Bible says he drives like a madman. Well, Trump makes his race to the, to the White House, and he does. When Jehu is heading to the, to the throne, he makes an alliance with the religious conservatives of the land, actually makes a partnership with one of them. They ride on the chariot together. Trump makes a, the, his alliance with the religious conservatives. Without that, he would not have been president. On top of that, he, he comes to, Jehu comes to the Capitol with, a, with, a, um, with a, uh, an agenda, which is to drain the swamp. Well, you know, so did Trump. Now, when Jehu comes to, to the final moment of taking power, he comes face to face with the nation's former first lady, and so whose name is Jezebel. Trump comes face to face with a former first lady whose name is Hillary. Now, now, interesting, because Jezebel was for Baal worship, which meant she was for the offering up of children. Yeah. So Hillary Clinton was the, the number one champion of abortion. And even though everybody was saying, you know, it was saying in the polls, you know, Hillary Clinton was going to Trump was going to beat him. You know, the, the paradigm said yes. that the modern day Jehu was going to win. The idea yeah. that this Jehu has all these parallels to Trump, it's almost funny in some ways. Yeah. He comes face to face with Jezebel. Um, and you are linking yes. uh, Hillary Clinton to Jezebel. Sorry, folks, uh, but Jonathan, keep making this case because yeah. it's about bail worship and it's about killing the yeah. unborn. Please it, go. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And yeah, I'll just I'll throw this in. You know, you know, Hillary Clinton was on the, the national stage with her husband for 22 years when he became governor until the end of his presidency. Then she went in public office for uh, for 12 more years. And then she two more years. She was running for president public life. She was on the stage. So so 22 years with her husband, 14 years on her own. Jezebel was on the national stage of Israel for 22 years with her husband, with her on her own 14 years. Same exact thing. Now, now, I'm just throwing that in. Now, the thing is, now Trump wins, okay? And when, one of the things was, now, one of the things is that when Jehu, Jehu becomes the one who pulls down the house of Baal or the temple of Baal, where they're killing their baby, they're killing babies. Interesting thing, Eric, when Trump announced his, his candidacy, when he began his rise, when, when Jehu rises, the temple of Baal actually falls. He actually destroyed it. Well, Trump rises in, in the summer of 2015. That same summer, it turns out there was an ancient temple of Baal that existed for almost 2,000 years. It comes crashing down to the, to the earth right as Trump begins. Now, where, now where was that temple of Baal that came crashing down when Trump... That was, that was Palmyra, Syria. Okay, and, and, and you, when you say it came it crashing up. down, what, what do we mean? What it mean? actually, the ones who crashed it down, interesting, was, was ISIS. Right. <laughs> you know, yet it still happened according to the, to, the, to the template. Right. And the other thing was, but here's the thing, you know, also what it's saying is, and I don't, you know, this isn't the paradigm, but I didn't realize all this when I wrote it, but it came true after. One thing is that if Jehu was the one who comes against the, 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 the worship of Baal, which is killing a child sacrifice, well, then Trump is going to end up more than any other president, regardless of what you think of him, ends up being the one more than anyone who's actually going to pull down child sacrifice in the form of Roe versus Wade. If it was not for what Trump did in appointing those Supreme Court justices, it would never have been overturned. So even in that, he was used. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to something very quickly. I'm gonna say one of the mysteries in there is that you know, God gives a calendar of holy days in the Bible, Leviticus 23. Interesting thing, because when we talk about the Jubilee, that when you look at the year when all these shakings came you know, on it, 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 everything followed this calendar, not only the nature of the shakings, but the exact the timing. I'll just, go, I'll just mention it really quick. The first appointed day of God is Passover. What is that about? It's unique because it's the one holy day. It's about a, concerns a plague, and it concerns a, actually it's the first lockdown in human history. They had to go in their houses because of a plague. Well, the amazing thing is when Passover came in 2020, it came at that exact time when we were all locked down because of a plague. Jewish people are actually recounting the story of when we were locked down because of a plague, and it's actually happening around. There's much more, but let me go to the next one. The next one is the next holy day is called Shavuot or Pentecost. It's the time of fire, fire, also linked to breath. I won't get into the breath part, but when Shavuot comes, that's in the spring, that's the late spring, in that year, next shaking comes on America, our cities are lit on fire. The summer of rage, George Floyd, all that, we are shaken. It actually, be, you know, the, the very day that it began was when they, the Jewish people are lighting candles on May 28th, that night, it, that's the night that the fires explode. It is the, time, it is the days of fire. I'm going real quick. Next one is the Feast of Trumpets. Now, just to say the Feast of Trumpets, the Jewish people call it the Day of Judgment because they believe that's the time when God passes a judgment on the year and, it, and it's the high court of God. They say he, he, in the heavenly court, the great judge determines everything, even who's gonna live and die. Well, on the exact day of the Feast of Trumpets, God touches the Supreme Court. That On that day, the Supreme Court Justice, who is uh, uh, Ruth Ginsburg, passes from the earth on the Feast of Trumpets, that is the very act that opens the door for the overturning of Roe versus Wade. It happens on the day, and that day is also given to begin the time of turning away from your evil, that for a nation to turn wow. away from you. on that day, the exact time. Wow. This is, you know, again, uh, if it weren't for you, I don't see anybody <laughs> else tracking on this stuff. God has really created you for this, uh, Jonathan, and anointed you for this. Uh, and I, I guess we're going to uh, pull you into the next hour. Uh, I want to talk about the future, what yeah. you believe God is, yeah. is saying about the future, yeah. because everyone, uh, not everyone, but most people uh, are wondering, what is God doing? Yes. What is God allowing? Yeah. What is going to happen uh, in this land. We've been living through a time of revelations where we've seen things that we never dreamt we would see, uh, corruption, uh, election interference, 
tremendous things that we never dreamt we would see uh, in America, where we have a, a big pharma colluding with social media to to force people to get vaccines, the kind of thing that makes even people that aren't already tuned in, it gets them tuned in, and they say, "What what is happening in this country? Uh, something is happening." Um, so we just got 30 seconds. Uh, say whatever you want, and then we'll finish it in the next. Yeah, hour. yeah, we'll yeah we'll definitely get into that because that's where the, that's what it's all about. That's where all this heading. Where are we? Where are we heading? And what do we do about it? That you know because because God is never finished. No matter what's happening in the world, we've got a we've got a role to play. We have to we have to do something here because we're not on earth to sit around. We're here to be God's agents uh, on earth, and that's what that's what the design manifesto. That's why it's called manifesto. People are wondering yeah. what yeah. is going to happen. In America, what is happening in America? We are in a spiritual war like we have never seen before. The forces of globalist, communist, Marxism, atheism are at war uh, with God's people, with liberty. It's just an astonishing moment, uh, and you've been a guide for many people to to mm. to help them see what is God saying. So, what do you see happening next year? Do you see Trump? getting back in office, because I think that uh, I believe revival is coming. Uh, I believe mm -hmm. shaking is coming. Um, I am hopeful because I look to God in the middle of all this stuff. But what do, what do you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I mean, God has never finished, and that's, that's what encourages me no matter what's happening around us. Um, I, the reason I wrote the book was be, really because I felt there, there has, there's a, people need an answer and where are we going. And also, I believe that God was pointing this all together. And the thing is that I will, I will say everything we just spoke about, all these things lead up to one thing. And they lead up to the overturning, for the first time in our history, anything like this, the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Now, here's the thing. You know, in the Bible, the, you know, the, first of all, the Roe versus Wade is the the abortion is the, the biggest massive brazen altar that we have in America, where we've killed over 60 million children. Talk about an altar. And what happened with Roe versus Wade, we know it's not the end of the story, it's just the beginning, but it was a cracking open of that altar. It's a breaking open of the altar. If you look at that, that cover, that it has a broken altar on it. That, that's, what, that, that's what that is, that's a broken altar. And, the re and that's so, that, this is crucial because, to where we are because in the Bible, when the sign of the broken altar appears, it means something very significant. It happens when there's the, the chance for a civilizational change. When, when, when uh, Israel came into the land, they broke the altars of the gods. When there was revival, the sign of revival wasn't a tent meeting. Well, that's great, but it was the broken altar. They broke the altars of the gods. And so all these things are pointing. There's one person in the Bible who is more linked to the broken altar than anyone else, and that is Josiah. That is why it's called Josiah Manifesto. This guy, Josiah, lives in a time when a nation that has known God, has turned away from God, is in apostasy, is approaching judgment. Um, it's a time of sexual immorality, killing children, gender confusion, and this guy goes against the entire flow, one man. And the thing is that, so the, the sign, it's really, I call it the Josiah moment, because this is what that altar is all about. And that is, it's a double-edged sword, and you alluded to it. And the first thing is that it is, on one hand, it's a, it's a time that it's late. The nation is racing away from God, ha, is in danger of judgment, and that is America right now. That's number one. But number two, God is also saying, listen, that was the hand of God, that, that Roe versus Wade was overturned, that was God's hand. And the thing is that, that what it's saying is God is opening a door, there can be revival. Josiah came at a very late moment and judgment was coming, but one man, you know, one radical revolutionary man actually changed the history of his nation, actually delayed judgment for an entire generation because of one man. And so what, so what this is leading to, and this is where it led me, is that I believe God is pointing to this with all these signs is pointing to this that Josiah in Josiah are the keys really of how we need to be right now. There, it is judgment or revival, and if there's not revival, America is lost. And so the thing is that we have to rise to this moment. So what the Josiah manifesto, the manifesto, which is the part, which is the last part, or what are the keys of that? What are the secrets of Josiah? What did he do? How could he go against the entire system? How could he be uh, basically deal with darkness and not be affected by it? How could he um, actually overcome an entire system? Not only, not only spiritually, but entire corrupt systems, institutions. That's the broken altar. He broke the altars of his culture. And we are called to do the same thing. 
all, the altars of our life too, but the altars of our culture. So Josiah really opens up the whole thing and that is thus the name. That is why, because that's where we are. Well, it, it's, it's unbelievable stuff. What we're dealing with right now in America, you know, for people who are tracking, we've never seen this uh, in, in America. The emergence of globalist, Marxist, atheist, tyrannous people uh, and systems that don't respect the foundational principles of this nation right. of self-government and liberty, which ultimately look back to Israel and their covenant relationship yes. with God. So it, it is a war between these two things that we've never seen it in the open in the way that we have. Uh, and when you talk yeah. about breaking the altars, you know, uh, people talk about draining the swamp. In other words, we have these institutions in America that are given over to wickedness. They are at war with we, the people. Uh, their mm -hmm. taxpayer money, our taxpayer money, pays for these institutions. And so w we, we have an option yeah. to either yeah. stand and fight uh, against this wickedness and see revival sweep through America, which, as you said, is the only hope for this nation, um, yeah. or the judgment that's coming is, is gruesome. It's gruesome. Yeah. So yeah. say, say yeah. more about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, one of the things about Josiah is he was radical. He, there was absolutely no compromise. He had to separate. First of all, he had to separate from those systems. He had to separate from the darkness. And then he had to act upon it as an agent upon it. But in order to do that, there has to be no compromise. I, I know this is one of your burdens, Eric, is one of my burdens. And that is that the church, you know, if, if, if it does not make a stand, and does not say, listen, let the chips fall where they may. As for me and my house, we're serving the Lord. It's lost. This is what happened in Germany. This is what we're seeing as well. Well, I mean, the I just want to, I want to say, yeah. uh, just interrupt, my book, Letter to the American Church, I, I point the finger, as you know, squarely at the church. It is the silence of the church on these kinds of issues that led to the satanic evil of the Holocaust and the Nazis taking over. It was the silence of good Christians who thought, we have a reason to be silent, this is not our thing. Uh, in my book, Letter to the American Church, which is going to be a documentary film, I'll talk about that on my own time, but... It says that if the church does not rise up, folks, if you're going to a church that's not dealing with this stuff, get out of that church. That fig tree has been cursed. Get out of that church because we need all hands on deck. If you have a, are, are, are a man or woman of faith, you need to be involved in what God is doing. But Jonathan, please yeah. continue. Yeah, yeah, and, and that is exactly what Josiah was. He was not that, he was not compromised in any way. He came, his father was corrupt, his grandfather was corrupt, it didn't matter. He broke out of that and said, as, and basically, I am doing what God called me to do, and I'm not going to live on the defense, I'm going to live on the offense, because God did not call us to be, live on the defense, he called us to be agents of him. So this is where we have to, you know, the end, you know, people look at the end times and they think, okay, it's only bad, it is not only bad, it's bad and good, it is dark and light, and if the dark is getting darker, we have to get brighter. One of the mysteries, Eric, about the end, I call it the mystery of the return, is that everything at the end of the age is returning to where it was at the beginning. At the beginning of the age, you had an Israel in the world, you got it back. You had Jerusalem, you have it back. You had Jesus, you're gonna get, we're gonna get him back. The thing is that, but you also had a culture that was pagan. And so now what we're watching is we're watching a Western Christian, Judeo-Christian civilization to revert to its paganism, its pagan state. But if that's happening, it is time for the church to go back to where we were at the beginning of the age, which was not cultural, it was countercultural. Was not status quo, it was revolutionary. It was the book of Acts. It was the spirit of God. These are revolutionary times, these are radical times, and that's what, that's what Josiah is saying. We have to become a radical people. We have to become a revolutionary people for God. This is why we were born. And you know what, Eric, one, one last thing is that when people look at, when you look at a movie, what's the most exciting part of a movie? The last 15 minutes. So oh, listen, praise God, we're in the last 15 minutes. These are the exciting times, and this could be the greatest time for those who will rise. It says, the eyes of the Lord are searching the earth, looking for the one. You be that one. I mean, everybody listening, you be that one, God will lift you up. I gotta say, uh, Jonathan, I'm in awe of, of everything you just said because it's exactly what the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. Exactly everything you just said. It's what I'm saying yeah. wherever I go. Uh, I'm working on a new book, Letter to the American Church. It's a, it's a sequel. Um, and I'm, I'm saying exactly a lot of what you just said. So I believe yeah. God is speaking. Uh, congratulations on the book. We have to have you back, preferably in studio. Thank the you. book is The Josiah Manifesto, 
by Jonathan Kahn. Jonathan, my friend, thank you so much. Thank you, Eric. God bless you.